Ukrainian President Volodymyr Zelensky on Sunday urged allies to allow strikes on airbases inside Russia with the Western-supplied long-range weapons. Ukraine is calling on the West to allow it to use the long-range missiles they have provided to strike targets deep inside Russia, as Ukrainian forces struggle to hold back Russian advances in eastern Ukraine. So far, the U.S. has allowed Kiev to use American-provided weapons only in a limited area inside Russia's border with Ukraine. Kiev officials argue the weapons are vital to weaken Russia's ability to strike Ukraine and force it to move its strike capabilities further from the border. Speaking in his daily address, Zelensky referenced Russian strike Sunday on Kharkiv, Sumy and Donetsk region. He said, every such Russian strike, every instance of Russian terror, like today's attacks on Kharkiv, on our Sumy and Donetsk regions, proves that long-range capabilities are necessary, and the range must be sufficient. І серед них троє дітей. Загалом тільки в одному цьому ударі по Харківщині було чотири авіабомби. Одна по Харкову, по будинку, інші три по селам Харківської області. Сьогодні ж росіяни били такими бомбами по Сумщині, по нашій Донеччині. Загалом щодо бомби не менше сотні таких авіаударів. За одну минулу добу 128 керованих авіабомб. І протиставити Цьому терору можна лише системне рішення. Це рішення щодо далекобійності, щоб знищити російську військову авіацію там, де вона базується. Це очевидно логічне рішення. І кожен такий російський удар, кожен прояв російського терору, як сьогодні, проти Харкова, проти нашої Сумщини, проти нашої Донеччини, все це доводить, що далекобійність має бути і має бути достатньою. Ми очікуємо відповідних рішень. Передусім від Сполучених Штатів Америки, Британії, Франції, Німеччини, Італії. Усіх, хто може своєю рішучістю допомогти в порятунку життів. Today Russia is in a state of serious exhaustion. Putin's army is catastrophically short of equipment, so it uses it only in certain sections of the front in particular in the area of Kurakovo and Ugledar. This was reported by the Ukrainian Military Political Observer of the group Information Resistance Alexander Kovalenko on the air of the YouTube channel Govorit Veliki Lviv. According to the expert, Russian military equipment has not appeared in the Kursk region for almost a month. Only recently, when the Russians launched a counter-offensive in this direction, did they begin to use a mechanized component. But there is a very interesting point here. When they started using equipment, they immediately reduced the number of FPV drones and cabs. Because there is no stable line of combat, and they do not understand where their units are and where ours are, Kovalenko added. Reports and analytical materials have repeatedly appeared in the information space about how Russia is losing a large amount of equipment and cannot compensate for it every month in such quantities as to break even, the analyst said. According to Kovalenko, the Russians are now going into the minus and North Korea and Iran will not help them restore their potential. They need a pause, peace talks and a reduction in the intensity of military actions. The occupiers understand that if they begin to reduce the fire impact, a Ukrainian counter-offensive will immediately begin, and they need to make sure that it does not begin under any circumstances, the expert explained. As Russia's wider war on Ukraine grinds into its third year, three main dynamics are shaping the battlefield. First, Russia is fully mobilized, politically, industrially and militarily. But this mobilization is depleting resources the Kremlin can't renew. Most importantly, stocks of old Cold War vintage weapons. In other words, Russia is strong but fragile. Second, Ukraine is mobilizing too, but it still relies on foreign aid to meet urgent financial and military needs and Russia-friendly Republicans in the US, House of Representatives are withholding a decisive portion of that aid. Third, Ukrainian tactics are superior to Russian tactics, helping Ukrainian formations to defeat much larger Russian formations. But tactics are irrelevant when and where Ukrainian forces simply run out of ammunition.
The U.S. and U.K. governments are discussing allowing Ukraine to deploy British cruise missiles backed by U.S. navigation data to launch long-range strikes on Russian territory, Bloomberg sources say. The issue is part of conversations that have taken place over the past few days as U.S. Secretary of State Antony Blinken has held talks in London and Kyiv, the sources said. The U.S. and Britain have signaled this week that they are open to Ukraine's request to strengthen its ability to strike deep into Russia. As Kyiv pushes for more powerful Western weapons to hit military targets inside Russia, officials have been talking about whether the White House might give Ukraine permission to use British Storm Shadow missiles for cross-border attacks, the sources said. Storm Shadows fly close to the ground at high speed before reaching their targets, using a system that combines so-called inertial navigation with a global positioning system and terrain-following navigation, according to a fact sheet on the website of their manufacturer, MBDA. The GPS satellite navigation system is operated by the Pentagon, although it is also used for public purposes such as online driving directions. When used in complex operations, Storm Shadow missiles often rely on US-provided data to help them map terrain with a high degree of accuracy, according to people familiar with the matter who spoke on condition of anonymity. The Pentagon maintains close and ongoing dialogue with our allies, including the United Kingdom, to ensure that any coordination of military capabilities is consistent with our shared objectives and international law, spokesman Charles Dietz said. Storm shadows have already proven to be a highly effective weapon for Ukraine, accurately hitting well-defended targets in Russian-occupied territory, according to military analyst and former British Army officer Justin Crump. It is not surprising that Kyiv lobbied for their use on Russian territory, especially for targeting airfields used for glide bomb attacks, he said. He is confident that despite the measures taken by Moscow, strikes with the said missiles will make it difficult to provide military logistics, command and control, as well as air support. And even if Russian aircraft move further away from Ukraine's border to avoid the missile threat, they will still incur increased time and costs for each sortie to the front line. Matthew Saville, director of military science at the Rusi think tank, believes that lifting restrictions on long-range missile strikes on Russian territory will put Russia in a dilemma. Where to deploy its precious air defense assets, which in turn will make it easier for Ukrainian drones to pass through. He does not believe that Storm Shadow will turn the tide.